Well, hey, welcome to uh, Race Pre HQ. I'm going to show a couple of you people how to take data off of your GoPro Hero 7, 8, whatever. I mean, really any GoPro um, and get it into something like um, Race Render, especially if you're using something like Track Addict to take your times down um, on the phone and kind of marry that data together. So here we go. So what I've done is, is I've taken out my um, memory card from the camera itself and I've put it into an adapter here. Um, you can get these usually when you buy a memory stick they usually give you some sort of adapter like this. Um, but you could always pick up a 15 or $20 ish uh, USB adapter kind of a dongle thing. Um, they go pretty quick as well. The reason for that is, is well because they go quick um, USB 3 or USB C you can copy a whole video off in 30 seconds maybe. Uh, so it's a lot faster. Doing it through the camera is a lot slower, but... And you press it in like that, it will get detected, hopefully. And I can have problems with this PC. Come on, man. Malarkey. I don't have problems just in my race car. I have problems with my laptop too. There we go, yay. So, um, your folder uh, where the stuff is gonna go into is this DCIM folder. I don't know, digital camera images. Um, sometimes we'll make another folder. There's reasons for that I don't care to go into, but, and you're going to have all these files and all these crazy extensions. And so for the most part, um, don't always go by date modified. That is uh, going to cause you a lot more. I don't have time for your updates windows. Um, what's going to happen is these dates will be all over the place. You can see I have not had this. I have, did not race in 2015 or 16. So the issue is when you take your batteries out of your GoPro, um, and you keep them out long enough, it will forget its time and date. So unless you take the time to go do it every single time to go reset your camera and go set the time and date, um, you're going to generally be defaulted to pretty much when you stick your batteries in and just go from that, right? So you can see there is a pattern here though. And so um, every video is a ever increasing four digit number. And then in front of it essentially is a zero one and a zero two, and sometimes a zero three or zero four. Um, the issue with that is, I think GoPro rolls its files over at four gigabytes or uh, whatever, a 32-bit integer is about 4.2 gig. Point is, is, is there's a certain size limit and it'll go make another file and it'll roll into it. So if you have a big, long 20-minute session, chances are you're only gonna get uh, like 10 minutes per file. Um, so you might do it multiple pieces and that's fine. So generally speaking, if you keep getting on top of it, your latest highest numbered file with a one in front of it is gonna be your last session. So in the case of that here, I'm gonna copy this 828. Uh, take a quick look. Let's open up real quick, see if it's me talking like an idiot. It's me talking like an idiot. That's definitely the video. Okay, so I talk to myself in the videos because, well, someone's gotta do it. And Mother's Day. I know, I know, shut up, go away. These function log things are annoying. And yeah, so that's the video I want to grab. So I'm just going to, in this case here, copy it over to my desktop. And it's going to do its thing. So let's say 45 seconds to kill. Um, so the other thing that we need on this is Race Hero Render. Race Hero is a different service. So we're going to pop open our Race Render. And so Race Render, um, when you get it, gives you a whole bunch of templates and stuff like that. For the case here, we're just going to ignore this. We're going to have a blank project because right now we're looking to just get the video in. Put this dead center because that's what people want to see. Um, okay, any second now. Uh, 
Okay, cool. So we have this in here. The order for which I'm going to do these things doesn't matter. Um, so that's up to you how you want to do it. But um, I like doing it the way I like doing it. So there's the, that's that. So what we're going to do is is we're going to first go into file. And we're going to receive files over network slash Wi-Fi. Do I save the current? There's nothing to save. No. So now it's sitting here and it's waiting for files coming over the track addict or other comparable products. And that's where we call this guy out. So come into your um, track addict program and click the little folder here in the corner. Choose a date or session we want to grab. So in this case, this was Button Willow. I'll grab the first session. So now we have all these laps in here. And when you click the share button down here in the bottom, this is at least on the Android app, it should be probably similar for the iOS peoples. We're going to share and we're going to share a Wi-Fi transfer to track addict or race render. By doing that, it's going to check for a legal car repair. It's going to find uh, Nikolai Jackoff. If you guys get the Nikolai Jackoff joke, awesome. Good on you. So they're now saying, hey, do you want to share it to the Nikolai Jackoff, which is the name of my laptop? I do. So I click just that. Transfer stuff over, transfer complete. Okay, we can just put the phone away. We don't need this anymore. Transfer has been complete. So again, do you want to do overlay stuff? Uh, I guess, I don't know. I'll do tr transparent too, why not? You can pick and choose all that stuff later. Uh, for data with visualizations, let's see, speed, max 160. It's where my speedo goes, but sometimes I go faster. Do I want highs and lows? Sure, it's kind of cool. You hit straightaways and yeah, corners and your lows. GeForce, sure, GeForce peaks, why not? Lap counter, lap timer, best lap overall or best lap so far. This is kind of if you want people to watch your video for a long time. If you give them overall instantly, then they don't want to watch all of it. It's best lap so far. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, track map. We want track map. That's what you guys are asking for. Track map. Here it comes. Tack RPM. I don't have the data on my track addict synchronized, uh, pulling stuff from my CAN bus and whatnot. Other people do have certain OBD plugins and things to get the tacks and the shifts and the get, but we don't have that yet. So, um, sorry. Anyhow, this is a good start. So let's click OK. So now we have the data. Now we have the track. Race render. No one wants to see your face. Uh, there, corner. All right, so now let's grab the video. So the video that we just copied onto the desktop right there, we'll drag this in. Appears to have embedded GPS, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to extract the data into your project? No, we don't. We don't. Go away. So now, hey, we have video. We have overlays. But now what's going to happen is, in just about everyone's cases, is that they're starting at different time periods. Um, I turn this on. I'm not doing eight miles an hour right now. I'm much faster than that. What zero? So what you're going to want to do is you can see they're out of sync because I started the video. Then I probably started up the phone at the getting them to lay dead on is, is somewhat difficult, but we can fix that by coming up here to the video and the data signified by the ones and zeros and stuff. We're going to click on that. We're going to click synchronization tool. So the data sync wizard, actually, no, it's just a little bit easier. This is the easiest way I know to do it. So I usually watch it for a bit and try to get where are we into the video, the sessions. <laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? All right, so this looks to be probably the beginning of the first lap. This is the out lap, I think. Let's see, we're all coming up to Phil Hill. And I can just tell, are we going fast or not? No, we're not going fast. We're swerving, we're warming, we're scrubbing the tires. Okay, so this is probably the warm up lap. So let's just go a little bit further. So we're at about 5.15. 5.30, I'm coming around the sweeper. So we're about 20 seconds away. Six minutes, here we go. Here's the tower and boom. I will call that the start finish line because the tower is pretty much right by my head right now. So we're going to say it's 6.05 is the very beginning of our first lap. Cool? Cool. 
So back up here to the data stuff, we're going to go click on this data. We want now we're at the what we think is our start. We're going to click our synchronization tool. We're going to pop open the data sync wizard. And it says, okay, input data to sync. So we want to sync this data file with this data event. And so we're going to say, this is our first time crossing the start finish lap, lap one start. I'm about to make a mistake, but I want you guys to see this. So this is the data event. Let's synchronize the data event to the current preview time. So it's going to shift all those data points because it's just a big CSV file of sorts. So right now it says I'm doing 46 miles an hour. And uh, I know you guys think I'm slow. I'm not that slow. I'm not doing 46 miles an hour, but this is a learning process because this will happen to you at some point. So here we are, and here's me doing 46. So I should hopefully be going a lot faster than 46. And I'm slow in the turns, not that slow in the turns. See, I should be accelerating right here, and I'm not. <laughs> okay, this is what, a 30 mile an hour turn? I'm doing 70, no, I'm, I'm, I would be dead. So what that means is, while the point is kind of close, chances are it's off. And so what I'm thinking is, is that the first lap we were, we were doing our parade lap, it saw as its actual first lap lap. So let's go back to 605. Come on, come on, come on. All right, here's the tower. Pals. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our data. Let's try this. Let's go to synchronization tool. Let's click data sync wizard again. So let's do it to the second lap crossing. Let's synchronize that data. Now it says doing 102, which I think is a little bit better believable. Let's fire that one off. So here's me slowing to 66, okay. Accelerating a little bit. I'd be hitting about 45, 40 miles an hour. That seems like it. So I'm come up to cotton corners. I'd be breaking in three, two, one. Yeah, right? There you go. It does have sound. I've muted my sound because uh, you wouldn't be able to hear me over it. And let's see how accurate this is. So if you guys haven't seen some of my other videos, I'm about to have a very fun situation come up on me in about, I don't know, five, four, three, two, one. And as you can see, I came to a stop. Lucky me. So that's how you do it. Um, with this video, you can, of course, move these around however you'd like. These are not locked in. So sometimes you'll see me and other people in their videos since I'm always shooting from the same position on my cage. Um, my head is always right there and I don't have any cool sponsorship on the back of my head just yet. So, um, there you go. I'll put some like peaks like that. Maybe I'll even put the, the track map right there. Do whatever you'd like. Um, you can always change these out. So what if you don't like this teal color? Well, you can click on this item here uh, sometimes. And that one there. And over here, there you go, it's at the bottom. Then you can choose properties of that item. So the track map I could change to a, uh, they have some different styles. You can of course change it in whatever color you'd like. So I'm more of a, I don't know, burnt sienna. I don't know, let's just, uh, let's go fuchsia. Pretty, right? You can customize all the stuff. They do have these styles here already built in. So this one was, I don't know, we'll do a uh, track map cross. So um, there's all sorts of different ones you can play around with. Um, so your speedometer, G-Force, you can do all of these and um, yeah, knock yourself out, go have fun. Um, when you're all done with this stuff, by the way, what you can do is you can go save it to a file. So when you like this, you can save your project. But really, the, the other thing is uploading your videos to YouTube, which I see you guys wanting to do. So um, you can certainly save it as a... Um,
I always save just because stuff happens. Uh, you got a Windows machine, certainly you've seen it crash once or twice. But um, you can, once you're done, you can also trim stuff. So let's say if I wanted to just highlight just this crash because I didn't crash, I had this off. Excuse my language. So you can also cut the time down. So I can see this little start and stop flag is actually if you're trying to set something because this whole time here, I can say, okay, I want to start from this point in the file and I want to end at, uh, I don't know, this point. Let's say this was a whole lap. You could do it just like that. And so when you go to export, it would just be pulling that information out as, um, now I've upgraded because I like supporting people who develop software because that's kind of what I do too. Um, but there's no saying you have to, but there is a time limit if you have the free version. Um, I want to say it's three minutes is the long, the largest file can export. Um, but in that case, do you want to save the current? Yeah, why not? Let's go have fun. Yeah. And when you choose to export that file, you get some output profiles of the size of the picture, and you can change that by doing stuff like if you want to do it to YouTube, what if you want 4K, um, maybe you're doing it to, to um, Instagram, which has slightly different proportions. So do pay attention to those. Um, 1080p is fine for me. Now do a local file and then I can just take that file. So there we go. So by putting those start and stop things, you've actually, instead of doing the entire time range for the file, you're going to be doing just a specific time. Um, the lap ranges, I don't entirely trust that to be honest, but um, you can choose those as well. And that was one other thing I wanted to show actually. Um, Where are the laps? There we go, laps. So sometimes if you guys are running with transponders, it's going by the GPS it has, which is sometimes accurate, sometimes not. But what you can choose to do is you can come here and click the laps and you can actually edit them. So what will still be counting and running and stuff, um, this might be showing the lap that it had configured. However, you can edit that and go pull up your official thing and type over it. So if, what if I had a 224, you know, 